welcome you to the Lighthouse in Cherry Tree, Pennsylvania, with founders and pastors Ken and Wilda Brown. And now, let's go into the service already in progress. I'm going to bring it in three parts to you. Number one is, there is a place to sit with Jesus Christ. And that's why we have communion. That is a place where we come and sit. Mary came and Martha, of course, was doing great works and so forth. And, uh, and, and that was all good. But Martha chose the better. She came and sat at the feet of Jesus Christ. Uh, and there is a place of sitting. So we're going to turn into the book of Ephesians. And I'm using the Amplified uh, today. And uh, for those out there, I have three words for you. The book of Ephesians uh, was written as a letter to Ephesus, but also to other churches, uh, maybe the seven churches in Revelation. We don't know exactly, but it was a, a letter that the Apostle Paul wrote. Uh, and he was writing out of his experience uh, of what he experienced in Jesus Christ. Uh, and so we're in chapter 2 of the book of Ephesians, uh, and uh, chapter 2, and I'm just going to read a little bit down through the Amplified Bible here in verse 1. It says, and you, everybody say, that's me. Say it out loud, that's me. And you, he made alive when you were dead by your trespasses and sins. And then it goes down through talking about all the sins you were according to the course of this world, the fashions of the world. You followed the prince and the power of the air. You were obedient and under control of demonic spirits and disobedience and unbelieving. And on down through in verse 3, it talks about the passions of our flesh, corrupt and sensual. And so it lists in 2 and 3, verses 2 and 3, it lists the whole bunch of things as that were in our past, but there's one little word that changes everything, and that's found in verse 4, chapter 2 and verse 4, and I would like to have that up there, please, uh, but God, everybody say God, but God. You see, we were all in sin. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Uh, we are in a world where there is sickness. Uh, we are in a world where there is COVID. Uh, we are in a world where there are diseases, uh, but those... Uh, are there and uh, even our sin, uh, the following the course and the actions of the world. Uh, I'm going to tell you something right now. You need to watch what you put on the Internet. I don't follow the Internet and I don't follow Facebook, uh, but I find out what you put on there. And when you put a negative report uh, on uh, Facebook concerning this church, uh, you're not touching me. It doesn't matter to me. I'm, you know, I'm too old to worry about that. Uh, but when you touch this church, you're touching the anointing of this church. And when you touch the finances of this church, you're touching the anointing that has come upon the finances. Uh, and they're going to continue uh, whether you uh, say uh, uh, whatever you say. Uh, you, you can, uh, you know, you, you might as well get in on what God is doing. Uh, and uh, that's why you need to be here tonight. Brother Rick Cope is going to be bringing the word of God. He has a powerful word of God. And as he brings that word of God, uh, I, I'm going to let you know uh, I don't even know what he's preaching, but I know it's going to be from the Holy Spirit. And God is going to... So as we come into this, uh, uh, let, let me just give you a little warning. Uh, uh, don't touch the anointed or the anointings of God. This house has been anointed in the area of financial ability. Uh, and uh, when somebody touches that anointing, they are touching God. They're not touching me. I, I don't... Uh, uh, I, I don't have that. I, I walk in that anointing, and uh, we are such a, a church that is so blessed that we can help others uh, and bless them. And so if we can help somebody in the Philippines or help somebody uh, uh, as uh, Rick Fritz uh, or uh, help somebody in Africa, we're going to do that. And you say, well, Pastor, uh, uh, it was on the Internet that you never uh, give anything uh, in the church. You don't know how much I give, and, and it's not mine. I receive it, and I let it flow. And somebody the other day was refusing uh, me doing something, and I said, don't you ever stop the flow in this church. Uh, I said, uh, when I hand you something, you receive it and say, thank you, Lord. Don't say thank you, Pastor, because uh, he just gives it to me to put it in my pocket, to take it out of my pocket, and to give it to somebody else. Are you all hearing? Okay. So don't touch the financial anointing that is upon this house. That's a warning from the Holy Spirit and from your pastor. You say, well, you make me mad today. I don't care. I don't care. 
I mean, I made some people mad. I can remember when uh, Brother Reverend Larson was here, and he uh, was a missionary to the Philippines when he was down the other building, and uh, Daisy Brown. And I can remember, and I was preaching pretty hard, and all of a sudden, they shot their false teeth out at me. I had on another occasion, uh, I was preaching on one side of the church, uh, and, and the ladies in the church, I was going a little bit long, and uh, they, they picked up their shoes and started throwing shoes at me. So I've been around. You know what I did then? I didn't stop preaching. I went to the other side where the ladies weren't throwing the shoes. Okay. So we see here somebody say, but God. But God, rich. How so rich is he in his mercy because of and in order to satisfy his great and wonderful and intense love which he loved us. He loved us. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. And he came for a purpose. He came to love you. He did not come to condemn you. He did not come to bring condemnation upon you. He came to love you. Uh, God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life he did not come into the world John three seventeen. he did not come into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved somebody ought to shout hallelujah so it was in his great love uh, when we were his love and his mercy great wonderful intense love amplified verse 4 verse 5 when we were dead By our shortcomings, our trespasses, in other words, our sins, he made us alive together here. Somebody say, fully alive. Say it out loud. I'm fully alive. Fully alive in the Spirit. And he made us alive together in fellowship and in union with Christ. He gave us the very life of Christ himself, the same new life which he quickened, and it is by grace. Somebody shout, grace. Say it again, grace upon grace, upon grace, upon grace, grace and favor and mercy. We didn't deserve it, but he delivered us from the judgment and made us partakers of Christ's salvation. And now the key verse, and he raised us up. I said he raised us up together with Christ and made us sit down together with Christ, giving us joint seating with Christ in the heavenly sphere by virtue of our being in Christ Jesus, the Messiah. And he raised us up. Somebody stand up and shout, he raised me up. Stand up and shout it. He raised me up. He is raising me up. He is bringing me to another level. We're taking that old song, Stepping in the Light, Stepping in the Light, and we're going to step into the light of Jesus Christ. Somebody say, he is raising me up to sit down. Sit down. And as you sit down, you're sitting down with him, sitting down together. Another version says, uh, sitting in union with him. And that's why we have communion, because communion brings us into union with the bread of life. Communion brings us into union with the blood of Jesus Christ that saved us and healed us. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. But Christ shed his blood for you and I. He bore the penalty. He bore our sorrows. We should be a happy people. Happy are the people who are led by the Lord Jesus Christ. And so in Ephesians, this passage, and he raised us up together, and another version says, in union with him, to give us joint seating with Christ, the heavenly sphere. He gave us a place to come And I mentioned just a little bit ago about Martha, and that was good. She was always doing something, and that is good. And and by the way, uh, God wants you to do good works, okay? But Mary chose the better part. She came to Jesus and sat down at his feet. The woman with the issue of blood, she came through. She could not get through the crowd, but she came to the feet of Jesus Christ. And uh, the, the woman with the oil, she came to Jesus, walked into a place, uh, and we know we've been in Africa. You don't go in to a room where all the men are. The ladies stay in the other area, okay? 
even in Romania. Men sat on one side, ladies sat on the other side. But she broke tradition and she went right in and anointed the feet of Jesus. She sat at the feet of Jesus Christ. So when we are sitting together in the first part, there are three words I'm going to give to you. Sit, walk, and stand. And you'll see them in the, in the book of Ephesians. I'm not going to read the whole thing, by the way. <laughs> Sit. And so when I was looking this up, and I looked it up in, uh, in Strong's to make sure. Sit together, that means to take a seat in the company with someone else. I'm not taking a seat, uh, how did Brother Fritz say it, along with somebody who's always negative about something. Huh? Uh, Debbie Downer, okay, uh, Debbie Downer, yeah. I'm not going to sit with a, alongside of a. You know, we have some Debbie Downers in church. We have some people here that no matter what you do, we painted, we had the walls all painted. I shouldn't say we painted. We had the walls all painted, uh, and uh, this is a beautiful sanctuary that God has given us. Uh, and uh, as we say that, you know somebody's going to complain about something? Uh-huh. They're called a Debbie Downer. I like that word, Debbie Downer. I'm glad you remembered that. Well, when we come, we come into communion, we come to sit at the feet of Jesus Christ. And when we sit at his feet, we are sitting at the feet of the master. Are you getting a hold of that? The King of kings and the Lord of lords, our healer, our savior, our deliverer, the one who God sent to heal us, to touch us. And when I was looking in the other versions, that 4862 and Strong's comes out of two other words, actually 4776, and it's two different words. And so I looked up those words. I just love the search, the word of God. And get enlightenment. And so as I'm sitting at the feet of Jesus, I'm coming to sit together and take a seat because he has taken me out of my sins and he has raised me up. He has taken me out of the darkness of this world. He's taken me out of the muck and the mire. He took me out of the miry clay, and he raised me up and set me on a rock to stay. Hallelujah. He raised me up, and now that I am raised up and my sins are forgiven, I can sit down at the banqueting table with the Master Jesus Christ. I can sit with him in communion with him. I have three words, and in the I'll be done by uh, 2 o'clock. Uh, sit uh, together. with It means uh, to take a seat with another person. Uh, and there is no other person that I want to take a seat with than Jesus Christ. I want to sit with him. I want to walk with him. And I want to stand with him. Somebody said to me the other day, Pastor, they keep telling us now, stand, stand, stand. And when you've done all to stand, and then you get up and say, go. Now what are we to do? Well, let me tell you, there's a time to sit, there's a time to walk, and there's a time to stand, and there's a time to go. But don't go before you stand, and don't stand before you walk, and don't walk before you sit. It starts off in Ephesians, Paul was a master of writing, and he wrote to us, uh, he raised us up. He raised us up. He didn't just raise Ken Brown up. He raised you up together in union with him and made you sit down together. That's why he said to his disciples at the communion, he said, it is my desire to sit down with you and to have this meal with you and to have this communion with you and is with desire that we had communion this morning and that he sat down with us and now as you you were raised up and as you stood up and you sat down it denotes a union and a companionship how would you like to have a friend like none other what a friend we have in Jesus. All my sins and griefs to bear. I know how it is sometimes with friends in the natural. You take to them and you say, oh, you don't understand what I went through. You don't understand all the situation I'm going through. And so when you start to tell them some of your things that, that you want them to pray with, then they say, but you don't have anything. You should hear what happened to me. Well, Jesus doesn't do that. He listens to your problems. He listens to your sorrow. He listens to your need. And he said, it's covered. It's covered. Somebody say Isaiah 52. It's covered. 
Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, uh, your sins, uh, and not only that, your iniquities, uh, uh, the, your peace uh, is covered in Jesus Christ. And so we have a companion. Jesus is not just my Lord. And I thank God he is my Lord. He's my king. He's my everything. But he is also my companion. I can walk with him. I can talk with him. I can commune with him. I can sit down with him. And I can say, Lord, you are my God. And so everybody say right now, say it right now, I want to sit with him. Before I do anything else, I want to commune with Jesus Christ. Uh, Pastor, uh, you're bringing the message, uh, but I want you to get a hold of the fact uh, that the Holy Spirit is going to lead you to Jesus Christ. Uh, And this pastor, if I teach you anything, uh, I'm going to teach you about Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm going to teach you about salvation. I'm going to teach you uh, that you need to repent uh, and turn from your wicked ways. Uh, And if you're on that Internet and putting derogatory things on the Internet, uh, you need to turn your Internet off and you need to turn her over and put some good things about this church. This church is an anointed church. Some of you say hallelujah. So some of you need to get on there and start putting some good things. We had a person here visiting from Girard, Ohio, came in, and we had a good crowd that night, had visitors in. But on the Internet, the last time I had looked, or Pastor Wilda had looked, uh, she told me there were 405 views. That means out of this last Sunday night, 405 plus the 45 people or 50 people that were in the sanctuary. Uh, so uh, there, there is about 500 people heard the message uh, that this is a miracle church. This is a miracle church. We're going to walk. We're going to sit in the miracles. We're going to sit and hear the testimonies. And Brother Rick said, you need to give a testimony. You need to give a testify of what God is doing. India gave a testimony of what God has done with her, what was it, sugar or something. And gave the report. You need to give a report. You need to talk about the wondrous works of our mighty God. This is a miracle church, and we're sitting in the church of miracles. Somebody say hallelujah. And you need to broadcast it. It said, well, on the day of Pentecost, it said there was a noise in that, that upper room. And that noise went out from there. And people started to scramble and started to come to see what the excitement was all about. And 3,000 souls got saved. I'm telling you, you need to broadcast. You need to speak it out. I am sitting at the feet of Jesus Christ. I had communion on Sunday morning. And I was sitting with my companion. I was sitting down with him at the table. And he was sharing with me his life hallelujah I saw something else in those uh, two words that I looked up in the in Strong's uh, and and it means there when you sit with Jesus that means uh, when you sit down and he raises you up uh, there is a hovering I never saw that before it means to hover over and dwell in continuously and so there is a hovering over this church you are sitting here right now and you had communion But there is a hovering of the anointing over every one of you in this place. There is a hovering. You think, well, the devil is power and principalities of the air, but not in this house because we told him he's ejected. We hit the eject button. We evicted the devil. We evicted cancer. We evicted pain, sorrow. We evicted depression, despondency. We evicted them in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of God, and we evicted them. And so, therefore, this atmosphere in this house is not filled with the powers and principalities of the air, but this house is filled with the power of God Almighty and the hovering of the Holy Spirit. When I saw that in there, I got excited at my desk, at my table. I made myself a big thing, about that big. I made it so I can put my Bibles all on there. My concordance, my Bible, my other Bible, another Bible over here, another one over there. What, what, what about the Internet, Pastor? You could have done just push the button. I don't want that Internet because the enemy could come through that. But he can't come through that word. Are you hearing me? 
He can't come through that word. He can't touch that word. Oh, he tried with Jesus. He said, the word says, Jesus, don't you tempt me. He said, man, I'll put you out of here. We're going to put him out of here. Miracles are happening in this house. And America, we're going to walk because we're sitting. He raised us up out of the deadness of our sins. And he quickened us. He made us alive. And I like the word, he energized us. The older you get, the more you quote it, the more you rehearse. He energized me. When you sit too long in that lounge chair, where are you, Jerry? When you sit too long in that lounge chair, you not only get lazy, but your bones all start to hurt. (laughs) His bones are fine. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It is time, yes, sit. Now, Kim doesn't sit around. She came right up here and gave a little testimony, and and she actually admitted to me that you see all those things out there. Everybody blames everything on me around here. I did not go out there on that ice and on that snow and make those donuts. Kim Noggle did that. I'll let you know that right now. So when you see out there in the middle of the parking lot and you see all those donuts, uh, she was showing the young people how to do it. And don't, don't you try until you're of age. You <laughs> and Matthew did it also. See how it goes on from one generation to the next? And to the next, those so when uh, Matthew, when he's doing it on his quad, you say, it was... It was Grandma Kim. It's her fault. And he raised us up together in union with him and made us sit down together. And we are sitting where he is hovering over us by the Holy Spirit and by the name above every name. There is an atmosphere of the glory of God in this house. Years ago I learned... That the word anointing means to paint or to smear. And I understand that. When we take the oil, sometimes we smear it on you. But uh, uh, when, when we do that, and I found out it means to paint. And so when we painted the walls of this church... The walls have been painted. That means that there's a double anointing in this house, actually triple anointing. And the Holy Spirit is hovering over this house. And we are... You are sitting in the very presence of of the Lord God Almighty in companionship with the Lord Jesus Christ, and he is a friend above all other friends. Hallelujah. And so when we sit together with him, we have joint seating with him in heavenly experiences. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say it again, Hallelujah. hallelujah. I've been teaching you a little bit about and I, I need to bring this, and this is off a little bit, but I've been teaching a little bit about when I used to coach. I coached for 12 years, and, and one of the main things I found out is that uh, points, uh, foul points, when you go up to the line and you get a one and one, or sometimes you get two points, uh, and you go up to that foul line, they can win a game for you. And so I told you, a little, you know, just mentioned it, that uh, I used to teach the boys, uh, when, you, when you come to that foul line, somebody has fouled you. And so now you get a bonus, and you get to go up to that line, and they can stand along the side. They can stand out there and make all kind of fun and laugh and yell and scream and everything else, but you can go up to that line all by yourself, step up to the line, look at the goal, get ready, bounce the ball a couple times, And then you don't look at the ball anymore, but you look at the goal. And as you're bouncing that ball, you're stepped up to the line. The guys on the other side would like to agitate you because they don't want you to get the one and one. They don't want you to get the two extra points. And so when you bounce that ball a couple times, and then you don't look at the ball anymore, but you feel where it is, and you get it and you open your hand up, and you're looking not at the ball anymore because what you're doing is looking at the goal. You're looking at the goal maybe somebody's going to get this you're looking right at the goal and then you release it towards the goal and you keep your eyes on the goal and your hand follows through like you're putting it right down through the hoop in the spiritual realm 
There's a lot of agitators and there's a lot of people laughing and mocking and the are standing along the side but they can't help you on this one you got to step up to the line yourself you got to step up to the line and when you go like that you are following through even if the ball bounces around a little bit you have done what you have to do and that is going to, and what I am trying to tell you today some of you kids need to listen to this because I taught that and I was watching the the game the other night the college game and that one game these, are, no, it was a professional, and uh, I don't watch much basketball, but I was watching a little bit of it, uh, and uh, I saw this one guy step up the line. He could shoot a three-pointer. Uh, he could shoot out there, but he didn't know how to shoot foul shots. When somebody fouls you, you ought to know what to do next. Are you all hearing me? And the enemy has been causing some foul things uh, in your life. But the referee is saying to you, you, because you were fouled, you get to go to the line. And you need to step up to the line. And you need to follow through then. Keep your eye upon the goal. Don't look at anything else. Keep your eye upon it. Pay attention to this game and maybe you'll learn how to play right. I did this for 12 years. And uh, my, I, I myself at that point, even though I was older, I was shooting 85%. That wasn't good. But I watched this professional could shoot all over the place. Uh, and they lost the game. But he only had one point out of 12 attempts at the foul line. A professional. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are sitting in the place of Jesus Christ. You have companionship today. It's not time you take a step up and know that he has raised you up to a new level. All those fouls that have come against you have been shoved aside. They are not allowed. They can say anything they want to say out there, but they can't go near that foul line. If they step over the foul line, you get an extra shot. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing? And if they agitate you, you get an extra shot for unsportsmanlike conduct. I know what that's all about. I was in Southeastern, and, and I was 33 at that time going to Bible school. And uh, I, I went to play for the Northeast, uh, and uh, they thought I was too old because these guys were all 18, 19, 20. And they, but they didn't know how fast I was at that point, and not now. But anyway, then. And... Uh, so the, the team from Alabama said, why don't you, a couple guys from Alabama said, why don't you join our team? So I joined the Alabama team. And guess what? The guys that asked me to play, I ended up being point guard, and they ended up sitting the bench. So they probably wished I didn't. But anyway, we were coming down to the championship. And wouldn't you know it was the Northeast that rejected me. And uh, we came right down, and uh, we, we were tied or no, they were one point ahead. And uh, I'm coming down, the, and they had the ball, and they're coming down, and I was quick at that time. Uh, and I just reached in and took the ball off of the guy and ran down, the, and he chased me, and he fouled me. It's one-on-one. On one. Hallelujah. One-on-one. On one. If I w take one point, we tie. And if I get two points, we win the game. And so I get all ready, and I'm all excited, uh, and the coach called timeout. My coach. But dummy, don't make somebody as nervous because the game's on the line, the championship is on the line, and call time out. He called time out. Listen, don't let the devil call time out on you. That's it. Now you step up to the line, you step up there, and you take your... Well, I went up there shooting uh, 85, 90% at that point, uh, even in there, uh, down at Southeastern uh, University now. Uh, I stepped up to the line, I looked at the goal, I did everything I knew, and I missed. I'll never forget that miss. And the coach said, you missed. He said, you missed. He said, you never miss. I said, yeah, I did. But it was his fault. Yeah. <laughs> I did everything. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Sometimes you step up to the line and you do everything you can do, but don't listen to somebody on the outside telling you, you got to make this. You're going to make it. You're sitting 
in together in union with Christ Jesus in the heavenly sphere and the virtue and the divine favor of God is upon you. Uh, Verse 8 just says, uh, it is by free grace that God's unmerited favor you are saved. You are delivered. Somebody shout, I'm saved. Oh, that was pretty weak. Say, I'm saved. I'm delivered. I am partakers of Christ Jesus' salvation. It is a gift of God. Now verse 10, for we are God's own handiwork. We are his workmanship. We are recreated in Christ Jesus. We are born again. Somebody say, God, rich in mercy, abundant compassion. Say it out loud. Because of the intensity of his love, when we were dead, he quickened us. He raised us up. He energized us. He gave me life. And he gave life, verse 5, he gave life to us because of Christ Jesus. Uh, Verse 6, he raised us up. Uh, He lifted us right out of the old. Oh, I love this. Uh, And and this is the uh, Taylor's version. Uh, He raised us up, verse 6. That is, he lifted us right out of the old life uh, and enthroned us with him in heavenly realms. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jack likes to sing about going to heaven. That's good. And I like that song, when we all get to heaven. And that's good. But I'm not there yet. But I believe heaven can come down where I am. And the miracles in heaven, I don't need uh, uh, prayer for sickness. I don't need prayer for things. uh, But here I still do. You hearing that? And so he raised us up. uh, And and, uh, the Good News Bible says it this way. Taylor's version, he lifted us right out of the old life. Old things are passed away. Somebody say, old things are passed away. All right, you're going to have to sing with me. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Old things are passed away. And I've been born again. More than a conqueror. That is who I am. I'm a new creation. I'm I'm a brand brand new man. man. I'm looking at the internet right now, and there are some of you that don't realize what I'm talking about. The Apostle Paul was telling us that we can have union with Jesus Christ. And we who were dead in our trespasses and our sins, he will quicken us. He will make us alive. He will energize us. He will bring us into new life in him. And the old things are passed away. Somebody say it with me. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Old things are passed away. And I've been born again. More than a conqueror. That is who I am. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. A brand new person in Jesus Christ. Lord, let the healing hovering, the hovering of your healing anointing, come over this congregation right now. For those who are not feeling well right now, we are walking in the miracles, and the hovering of the Holy Spirit is in this place to glorify Jesus Christ. And I pray right now that healing anointing will touch the physical bodies. And Lord, your body was broken for their bodies, that their bodies might have strength and might have healing and we pray right now let us walk in those let us sit in this house knowing that the hovering of the healing power of the Holy Spirit is moving upon you right now hallelujah just a couple more notes here to sit in heavenly realms or experience because of the union with Christ and because of his grace is unmerited favor. You don't deserve it, but he's going to do it anyway. Say, I don't deserve it, but I'm going to have my healing. I'm going to be healed right now. The second thing, and I want to go to chapter 4, and I have a whole lesson on this. Uh, Therefore, the prisoner for the Lord appealed to you and begged you to walk worthy. Somebody say, walk worthy of the divine calling to which you have been called and uh, So he calls you to be walking worthy, and according to the King James Bible, walk worthy according to the vocation. And we've had a whole lesson on vocation, vision, and obedience, and 
uh, so forth, and I'm not going to go into all that. Uh, but what I want you to see is when you walk now, everybody say, I am sitting in the presence of Jesus, and I'm going to learn to walk with him. Everybody sing it with me. And he walks with me, and, and he talks, talks with, with me. me. And, and he, he tells me, me I am his, his own. own. Did you know what you just sung, Martha? You said Jesus knows you by name. And he has called you special unto him. And he has called you and ordained you. And he says, I'm here this morning just for Martha. Hallelujah. And I'm here this morning because you may not be feeling real well in body yet. And the Lord showed me that he's hovering over here with a healing anointing this morning. And he said, I'm here just for Susan. Guy, you can just sit there. You're like that Jenny person. But anyway, he, he's saying, I'm hovering over here with a healing anointing. And if you can just receive that now by faith, it was given here. By faith, healing anointing is going to touch you. By the time you get home, you're going to feel strength coming back. Your blood system is going to be flowing better. You're going to begin to glow with the glory of Jesus Christ. Somebody say hallelujah. It's happening. I can feel it moving in the house. And then as we sit in his presence, the next thing I want you to see is, is that we are God's workmanship. He has called you by name. Harry, I know you're a goofy guy. No, I mean, you're a nice guy. You're a nice guy, but God loves you and he calls you by name. And he said, Harry Cooster, you are mine. Sins are passed away. Old is passed away. You are a brand new person in Jesus Christ. And because of that, he is now hovering over this place. Amen. Somebody need a healing. You might as well get it right now. Man, it's here. I don't know what you're going to do out there in the internet if you're sitting on the couch watching this, if you're drinking a cup of coffee. I don't have to put your coffee down and just say thank you, Jesus, for the healing because that church is walking in healing and, I'm, and they're sitting in the healing anointing of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the only begotten Son of God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the great Jehovah, the Jehovah Rapha, the God of all might and power. And I, they're sitting in that anointing and I'm hearing it from here and faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And as I'm hearing this. Uh, healing uh, is coming through those uh, through the atmosphere. Uh, healing is coming through that TV. Uh, uh, healing uh, is coming uh, and touching me. And I am healed. I'm able to go out and run donuts in a church parking lot just like him. He prepared ahead of time that we should walk in those good works. And walk worthy. Live and this is another version. Live and act in a way worthy of one chosen. Everybody say, I have been chosen. I have been called, chosen, ordained of God Almighty. He loves me. Even if you don't love me, he loves me. Even if you're mad at me this morning, it don't bother me one iota. Because I know Jesus loves me. I reprimanded this morning in this house. Because I believe if you get the good things, you need to also be corrected. Mm -hmm. And so we are to live and act in a way worthy of one called. I am called. Thank you, Lord, you make me worthy. Walk in meekness and forbearance and gentleness, verse 2. Work uh, uh, meekness and forbearance, gentleness. For, you know what forbearance is? You know there's forgiveness, and that's when you forgive somebody. Okay, like Jesus forgave us of our sins, and, and they're forgiven. Do you know what forbearance means? Put up with them. Forbear means to put up with, with their antics. Yeah. I don't put up with you too long. All right. Walk in love, five and two. We need to go over to five and two. Now we're walking. Everybody say, I'm walking. Say, in my walking. Say it out loud. In my walking. In my talking, in my sleeping, 
in my waking. I must have Jesus in my life. I sat with him, and he's sitting me as a companion in heavenly places. And it was his desire to sit with me this morning, and I'm sitting with him, and I'm in companionship with the King of Kings. And now I'm going to get up, and I'm going to walk in the things that he has. I'm going to walk in love. I'm going to walk, and let me just bring them down real quick, or walk as children of light. I'm going to walk in the light. I, I was telling you that I was searching for some things. And uh, three weeks ago, I lost my glasses, and these are prescription. I, I got them out of, a, 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 out of a thing from IUP, out of a drawer. But they are my prescription. Isn't that amazing? I God knew that years before. And uh, I even painted that thing and didn't even know those glasses were there. One day, we were giving them away, some of the things. Uh, and I, as I was giving them away, I reached in there, and there's these glasses. And wouldn't you know, they're prescription just for me. Whose are they, Pastor? They're probably some professors from IUP. So I'll wear them. But three weeks ago, I lost them. And I looked everywhere. And you know when you lose something, you know how it can drive you goofy? Okay? And my daughter was saying, oh, yeah, you lost your glasses. And yesterday she was hearing me. She said, Dad, do you want to you go look again and, and, and see if you can find that checkbook? Because I lost the checkbook. For I had it the other day. And when we left here, I went right to the bank. I had the checkbook. And I came back. And then Daryl and Nancy took the truck and, and uh, Walt and uh, a friend of yours, I forget his name. And uh, they, they went to get something. And uh, they took the church truck. And I, I looked over. I went over to the pavilion. I looked all over the place. I, I looked all over here. We had moved all that stuff up there. And I thought, man, I can't lose the church checkbook of all things. uh -huh. And uh, so I came over again last night, but last night I brought a light with me. It's a little light, it's a little square thing, and somebody sent it to us and wanted us to buy them for the church or something, and, and uh, you can get it for about four bucks. But I f flipped that thing on, and man, it has two LED lights. Uh, and so I got that light, uh, and I brought the truck back because they brought the truck back, and uh, I took the trailer off and brought it out here, and I thought, I'm going to look and see if I can find that checkbook because I knew I had it in the truck. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, losing something and you just can't find it? And Renee said, Dad, that's really bothering you. I said, yeah. I lost the church checkbook. It doesn't matter too much. But anyway, uh, anyway, I got that light. And I went out there, and I had pulled everything out. I had uh, Walt and his friend help me, and we took all the tools and everything out so they could get in. I don't know how you got in that truck in the back seat with your long legs. But anyway, yeah. Uh, uh, we pulled everything out of there and put them in the maintenance room. And uh, so I went out there with the light, and I knew there was nothing in there. And uh, Daryl and Nancy had the thing. Nancy drove the truck, by the way. But anyway, uh, with a plow on it and with a trailer on the back. So don't you say you can't do things around here. So anyway, I got the light. Everybody say, he got the light. Say it again, he got the light. Because I'm walking in the light. I had already searched that truck from top to bottom, moved the seats back and forth and so forth, uh, and I get the light, uh, and I go in the driver's side, uh, and I look underneath. I looked in all the compartments. I looked on the thing that I had up there where I had the checkbook uh, and where I had my wallet, uh, and I couldn't find it, uh, and I have to look over the seat and down inside, and something reflected me off the light. It was the glasses I lost three weeks ago. Do you all hear that? It reflected off the light. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And I reached down. I can hardly get my hand down in there. I pushed the seat as far back. I reached back and pulled it out, and I had my glasses. I said, hallelujah. Three weeks I've been using readers, and they're okay. Right now you're all pretty fuzzy, but anyway. <laughs> Put my glasses on, I can see. These, these are special to me. Uh, and uh, three weeks, I didn't have them. It was lost. But I found it by using a light. Yeah. I lost it, but I found it. Found my glasses, Renee. She said, I'll leave mine here, Dad. Uh, they're readers, too. Uh, if you run out, you can use mine. You uh, see me preaching with hers on. <laughs> <laughs> so I still couldn't find the checkbook. And I came in, and I thought I was in here, and I went all around, and I looked up there and also lost the, uh, the remote to the speakers, uh, and I found the one, but when we were moving everything, uh, it was lost. Uh, 
And I got my light, and I went up over that amp board. Did anybody ever see how many wires we have around here? Uh, there's a lot of wires around here. Some of you are wired right now. But anyway, <laughs> I got that light, and, and I'm going across, and all of a sudden, I, I found the remote. I said, ha, two out of three ain't bad. Still didn't have the checkbook. I went into the maintenance room for some reason, and I don't even know why I went in the maintenance room, but I went in there remembering that Walt and his friend had taken my big box of all my tools and everything out of the back of the truck that I carry in case I, I, I didn't uh, take out uh, uh, Lynn. I didn't take out the uh, tow rope because uh, Nancy was driving. So uh, I left the tow rope in there, but the rest of everything else uh, I took out. Uh, and. Uh, I happened to go in there, and I had my pillow in there, because when I plow, I put the pillow in so I can see up over the plow. And I moved the pillow, and what you, in my toolbox, what do you think was there? My checkbook. Three out of three. But what I'm telling you, I had looked for them, but until I got the light, I could not find what I was looking for. And it was frustrating me. Some of you are frustrated. And I'm telling you, it's time that you begin to walk in the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. In my walking, in my talking, in my sleeping, in my waking, I must have the light of Jesus Christ. And I put down here in 5.8, it says, as we are walking, we are walking, of course, in meekness, forbearance, gentleness. We are to walk in love. We are to practice living in love. And then 5.8 says, we are to walk as children of light. Somebody say, the light of Jesus Christ is shining. That little illustration I gave you about using the light, looking for the same places that I had looked before. Oh, you the same places that I had looked before, I couldn't find when I turned on the light. When I turned on the light in the natural, I saw a reflection. I found the checkbook. I found the remote. I found Jesus Christ as the light of the world. Hallelujah. He's my light. And until I turn on the light, until I get turned on to Jesus, I can talk about healing. I can talk about miracles. I can talk about things. I can talk about the Word of God. But until I turn on the light of Jesus Christ and begin to walk in the light as He is the light, then I will find what I'm looking for. Somebody get a hold of that this morning. Hallelujah i got nine minutes. Can I make it? I want to go one more. Somebody say, I'm walking in the light. Right there. Whew. I am native born to the light of Jesus Christ. I like that amplified. Everything that light shines on is made manifest. That's what my note says, 513. 515, walk circumspectly. Walk as wise people. 517, walk in understanding of the will of God. 518, walk in the anointing. And then this is my own. It's not out of the scripture. It's now, if this is a church of miracles, why don't you begin to walk in miracles? When you go out those doors, carry that miracle with you. Be a carrier of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. I, I want to get over to the last one, and it's found in 611, please. Uh, 611. See, what I did is took you through the whole book of Ephesians in about 45 minutes. Actually, it's going to be an hour. Whew. Are you still here? I'm preaching double message this morning because I'm not preaching tonight. So, Brother Rick, whatever God leads you this, this evening, Prophet Rick Crope, you just follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. When I went up to Rick uh, Fritz when he was here and he was walking around, and uh, I said, you know, you're in this house. I said, you take the freedom here. He said, I know that, Pastor. He's sitting over there leading the song, Victory in Jesus. He's walking around the church while you people are singing. He took his freedom because the anointing is here. Somebody say hallelujah. On 6-11... And I'll just quickly, uh, verse 10, I, I'm going to conclude this. Uh, 610, in conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Look at your neighbors and say, be strong in the Lord. Now, say it like you mean it. Be, be strong in the Lord. 
Yes, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Uh, somebody say, be strong in the Lord. That is, be empowered through your union with him. We sat with him. We walk with him. And now we're going to draw our strength from him. And it's in his boundless might. And put on the whole armor of God. The armor of the heavenly arm. God supplies all that you need. So therefore, you can stand. Everybody say, stand up. You don't have to. Stand up. Say it. Stand up against all the strategies and deceits of the devil. And uh, 6.13, put on God's armor uh, that you may be able to resist and stand your ground. Shout it out. I'm going to stand my ground. If somebody come to your house uh, and started to break in and you say, oh, come on in, take anything you need. That's after they're on the floor. You understand? Somebody came to my house one time, complained about my dog, and came right up. A, uh, uh, at that time, I had a, a, a lassie dog, and I never hooked him up. He always stayed up, and then he started, for some reason, started running down over the bank. And, and this guy came up, uh, drove right up in my driveway, right up to my house, uh, and it was in the summertime. And, and I saw him coming up, so I stepped out on the porch. And he came up, and he's ranting and raving and telling me what he's going to do and all these things he's going to do to me. And I stood there and listened to that for a little bit. And I said, sir, and he stopped. I said, you're standing on my porch, and you don't know who you're talking to. I said, you're standing on my porch. And I said, that will be enough. You see how you came up that driveway? You can head right back down that driveway. He would have bopped me, and then he would have got a bopping. I don't let that happen. So he was so mad, he went to the dog catcher or dog whatever and uh, reported me and said that that lassie dog or that dog up there is running loose. Well, we're out in the country. We're on a farm, 30, 70 acres, and we have two and a half acres, and he's just running loose, uh, and, and we're on the farm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Well, for some reason, I said uh, we had to go away that day, remember? We went away that day, and for some reason, I said, Lassie, come here, and I had a hook, and I hooked him on the clothesline. Wouldn't you know, while we were gone, the dog catcher came. <laughs> Wouldn't you know that? While we were gone, the dog catcher came. And when they came up, Lassie was on the line. That was the only day in his whole life of 17 years that he was ever on a line. It was a day that we were away and the dog catcher came and the dog catcher looked and saw it and left the note and said, you're okay, everything is all right in this place. Well, we knew it was all right. So I took him off the line. He never was on the line again. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Some of you are on the line. And you need to know that you've been set free by the hovering power of the Holy Spirit. Stand your ground. I won't forget that message that Pastor Cindy preached. And she said, old Shamgar, I think his name was, stood his ground and defended his pea patch. Some of you need to defend your pea patch. You need to defend your home. Don't allow the enemy to cause trouble in your household. When there is a little bit of a... A domestic uh, disputes coming in my house. Uh, you will hear me holler from one end of the house. Whoa! That's enough. We don't do that in this house. When a man comes up uh, and puts his fist up at me uh, and tells me what he's going to do, I said, "The way you came, uh, the way you came up, uh, is the way you're going back. Uh, depart from me, you worker of iniquity." When the enemy comes at me, I say those doors go two ways. You come in one way, you can go out the other way. Because cancer does not reside in this house. Pain and affliction cannot reside in this house. Because we're not only sitting in the miracles, we're not only walking in the miracles, but now we are standing on holy ground. We're standing in the miracle working power of Jesus Christ. And the enemy comes against us and I say... We evict you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody stand up and say, I evict you. Devil, I evict you. Powers and principalities, you are spoiled in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory. Don't tell me we're not walking in a miracle house because I still have three minutes. And all I'm going to do is give the glory to Jesus Christ. But before I do, I want to sing this little song. And you know it. And he walks with me and he talks with me. That's terrible. And he tells me that I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there. None other has ever known. You are prophesying right now by song. You are prophetically singing that Jesus is going to walk with Harry and Melissa when they leave this house. Wherever they go. And Carla, they're going to walk with you to your house. And you're going to walk with you right to your house and your sister down in Baltimore. He can even walk there. He's going to walk with you. And not only he's not only going to walk with you, he's going to talk with you. He's going to commune with you. You're going to sit down with him. You're going to sit down, and I'm telling you something right now, huh? and this is for this congregation, maybe for those on the Internet that are receiving it. God is going to reveal himself to you in 2022. I saw it on a sign at the Church of God in Garmentown. And as I'm going by, they have all those things, the services and everything. But it says, may God reveal himself to you in 2022. And I said, yes! Yes! Reveal yourself. And he's revealing himself right now by his word. And he walks with me and he talks with me. And he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there. None other has ever known. Heavenly Father, this is your word. And we brought it from the word that you gave to us, illumined by your Holy Spirit. And I pray this morning that this word will not go void, but will accomplish what it was sent forth to do. For your word says, even as the snow comes down from heaven and returns not again, so is my word, and it shall accomplish that which I have spoken. And Lord, you said this morning that we are sitting in a miracle working house. And we are walking into miracles, not only in this church, but in our homes, in our families. And we are walking, and you are speaking, and you are talking to us. And then, Lord, you said in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11 that we are to stand our ground, stand by faith, stand in that love, stand in that divine outpouring of blessing. And I pray at 12 o'clock on this day, whatever it is, February something, February 6th, I pray that that divine favor will come to your home. I pray that you will get enough energy that you can go out and make some donuts on the parking lot. <laughs> I pray that the strength that God's already touched you, Mr. Butch, will continue because there's a hovering of the holy anointing upon you in the name of Jesus. I'm praying for this guy, Shelly. What do you think? Think we ought to pray for him? Yeah, because the hovering of... Man, I feel heat all around. Whew. I feel that heat all around. I, I'm this far away and I can feel the heat of the holiness. There's an atmosphere of glory. Somebody say glory. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you, we invite you to watch a new service every Sunday evening at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Watching on Facebook, please click the like button and leave a positive comment. And please share with others. YouTube watchers, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. Help spread the good news of Jesus Christ.